This call is being recorded. Morning. Hey, Sister Julia. Yeah, today my birthday. Happy birthday, Sister Julia. Thank you. Sister. I'll call you a little later, okay? Okay. Love, Love you. you. Love you too, hon. We all have two on the line. You should have been grandchildren. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my love. Hello, Wendy. Yes, Good Julia. Good morning. Thank you for calling Declare Victory. This is Valacita, who has joined us this morning. Good morning, Valacita. It's Susie. Good morning. Good morning, Valacita. It's Diane. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, this is Sister Julia. It's my birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Sister Julia. That's awesome. <laughs> Praise God. That's going to say to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sister Julia, you don't want me to sing to you. <laughs> I don't have the voice for it, but maybe someone else <laughs> that's more suited for the job could do that for you. <laughs> yeah, I just woke up and I said, Lord, thank you for my gift this morning. <laughs> Amen. Uh, that's Lord. right. Yes. Good morning. Thank you for calling Declare Victory. This is Valacita. 
Who else has joined us this morning? Let it pass on today. It's my birthday. Hey. <laughs> we certainly will. <laughs> Thank you so much. I was so, so beautiful this morning that I made it. That's right. It's a blessing. Yes. Well, we have been gave me another day, another year. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Good morning. Thank you for calling Declare Victory. This is Felicita. Who else has joined us this morning? Good morning. This is Yvette. Good morning, Yvette. Happy Tuesday, Saints. Good morning. It's Sister Veronica. Happy Wednesday and good morning. Oh, I'm to- sorry. I'm going back again. <laughs> you know what? It's okay. I almost said Tuesday as well. <laughs> To stop myself. <laughs> Good Wait, morning. I tried to get it together before. I, okay, okay. <laughs> Wednesday, I was there at first. No, we we appreciate the greeting. Thank you so much. Dalasita, um, Sister Yvonne would say good morning as well before you got on. Oh, thank you for letting me know. Good okay. morning, Sister Yvonne. Are you there, Sister Yvonne? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. thank you for calling Declare Victory. This is Valacita. Who else has joined us this morning? Good morning, Valacita. It's Yolandra. Good morning. Good to see you over the weekend. Yes, wonderful to see you too. And good morning, Yolandra. Good morning. Thank you for calling Declare Victory. This is Felicita. Who else has joined us? Thank you for calling Declare Victory. This is Felicita. Is there anyone else on the line that would like to say good morning? Yo, yo, what's up, family? Good morning. Good morning, Brother E. Good morning. Thank you for calling Declare Victory. This is Valacita. Who else has joined us this morning? Good morning. Thank you for calling Declare Victory. This is Valacita. Is there anyone else that would like to say good morning before we begin the hosting? Okay, at this time I'm going to ask that everyone please place your phones on mute. Um, We'll begin the hosting. Good morning, everyone. My name is Valuable Valacita, and I'm your hostess. Thank you for joining us here on Declare Victory. We are a prayer call that meets Monday through Saturday, starting at 6 a.m. Pacific time, to edify, empower, encourage, and equip you in your walk with Christ. Please feel free to invite a friend so they can be blessed as well. 
Thank you for joining us daily in April as the new themes will be on both the grace and mercy of the Lord. You do not want to miss the teachings, lessons, and messages that the declares are preparing, preparing as they hear from the Lord for his people. We have one announcement. Today is the day that declare victory fast for anything that you may be believing the Lord for. If you would like to join in, push back your plate or something that you spend a lot of time doing and offer this time to the Lord in prayer. We will be fasting all day until 5 p.m. when we will call back into the same phone number and have a quick closing prayer. We have one prayer request that was, or two prayer requests that were submitted from uh, the app. The first one is from Sister Carolyn, and she submitted a prayer request, and she asked that we please cover her pops, Charles, in prayer. He has started his treatments, and that's from Sister Carolyn regarding her father, her pops. Also, please lift up Renee and her family as her mom has recently passed away. We will keep them uh, lifted up in prayer. We have a one praise report, and that was submitted by Susie, and she has reported that her MRI has not changed. So praise God for that. And also, Sister Julia wanted us to make sure that everyone knew that today is her birthday. So praise the Lord for that. The order of the call is as follows. Declaration will be done by Dion. Praying and corporate praise will be done by Sabrina. I'll repeat the order. Declaration by Dion. Praying and corporate praise by Sabrina. At this time, we ask that you please place your phones on mute until instructed to come off of mute. I now pass the call to Dion. Well, good morning. God morning. Great morning. And happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Love you, Jew. Um, <laughs> you're more than welcome. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Wednesday. Um, I am prayerful that today um, you are found in great health and great spirits and prayerfully if not by the time uh, the share ends maybe you'll have a little hope to continue in the press pressing toward the mark of the prize which is in Christ Jesus um, there is a high calling on your life and I believe that God is going to demonstrate to you how important you are to the kingdom um, again, it's Wednesday. It's the day we set aside to fast and to pray. And I'm hoping that even during the share, um, it will encourage you. If you've never done so, it will inspire you to join us today. And that's just setting aside something similar to Lent that you absolutely adore and making the sacrifice that God would be glorified and that you would be uplifted in doing so. Really quick reminder for those that are online, if you'd be kind enough to make sure that your line is muted, check, double check, triple check, and quadruple check, just to ensure that the radio stream on Freedom Radio is uh, clear. Um, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Also wanted to, um, I'm not sure, uh, Valacita, if you mentioned it, but we had two um, DV members who were affected by grief and loss on yesterday. Um, love and peace, that's what we call her. Rene, that's what I call her, lost her mother on yesterday. And so please don't hesitate just to bombard heaven so that God would comfort her heart in this time. And Lisa lost her sister-in-law. That's uh, the master teacher, Lisa Porter. And um, just be prayerful for uh, the, the children and for Lisa in general. Her heart is extremely heavy, and that makes my heart heavy. So I uh, just want to remind you to be mindful that it, it just might be you. If you've not done so, I'd encourage you to invite a friend, a family member, or a loved one um, to join us online as I believe that this teaching is going to empower you um, to walk in freedom. 
and and ultimately that that's our hope and our goal is that we walk in the liberty wherewith we are saved. So um, today's teaching, I'm going to do a little bit more reading than I normally do um, in an effort to bring clarity to the word of God so that uh, you may see it differently than you have in times past. I'm going to give you some just some basics of the power of grace. Um, the, the true power of grace and the good news and or the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're going to start um, in Acts, the sixth chapter. Um, I'm going to I'm going to read that for you this morning. Um, and, and it's talking about Stephen in a very specific time. Um, and Stephen was one of the disciples and how that grace was demonstrated then as he was accused of being blasphemous because of how powerful the grace that rests on his life um, was experienced through his life that it sat on his life i'm going to give you just some some primary things grace can be possessed you can possess it you can also be clothed in grace you can extend grace You can observe grace. Your grace can be increased. You can approach grace and you can excel in grace. Grace also has the ability to appear. You can stand under grace and you are chosen for grace. Ultimately, grace is the gift, a gift, a powerful gift, in fact. So again, Acts, the sixth chapter, Stephen is chosen to serve. And in those days, as the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint by the Hellenistic Jews against the Hebraic Jews that their widows were being overlooked in daily distribution. I'm going to touch on that in a little while. Um, Then the 12 summoned the whole company of the disciples and said, it would not be right for us to give up preaching about God to handle financial matters. Therefore, brothers, select from among you seven men of good reputation full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we can appoint this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to preaching ministry. The proposal pleased the whole company. So they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Proturus, Nisenor, Timon, Paranus, and Nicholas, the proselyte from Antioch. They had them stand before the apostles and prayed and laid their hands on them. So the preaching about God flourished. The number of disciples in Jerusalem multiplied greatly, and the large group of priests became obedient to the faith. Now Stephen, full of grace, in possess was performing great wonders and signs among the people then some from what is called the freedmen's synagogue composed of both centurions and alexandrians and some from Sicilia and asia came forward and disputed stephen but they were unable to stand up against his wisdom and the spirit by whom he was speaking. Then they persuaded some men to say, we heard him speaking blasphemous words against, listen, we heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes. So they came dragging him off and took him into the Sanhedrin. They also presented false witness who said 
This man does not stop speaking blasphemous words against his holy place and the law. For we heard him say that Jesus, this Nazarene, will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. And all who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Now, as I began to study this, um, I have been listening to Dr. Matthew Stevenson um, of All Nations Worship Assembly as he's been sharing um, on what's called the road to Romans. And the Holy Spirit had inspired me to begin to take a different look at who he is, how he is, why he is, what he is to me individually. And through that particular teaching, it compelled me to remind us of the power and the impact of grace in and of itself. One of the things that I, I know as a result of how I grew up and the traditions in which I grew up, it had a tendency to leave me um, questioning why I believed what I believed. Um, in many instances, I heard over and over again um, the stories about if you don't do this and if you don't do that, the, the end results um, and what they would be. I, I consistently heard how um, the influence of what their forefathers are, shall I say, the teachers that I sat under for a season in my life, um, they didn't really talk about grace that much. They, they talked more about what my responsibility was. What I understand today is that the law was created to expose us to what sin is in an effort to buy works or the impact of correcting and using different measures to change things in an effort not to sin. But then I, I came to the conclusion, and I'm going to read to you Romans, the 11th chapter, the sixth verse. And it says, and if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If it were, grace would no longer be grace. Seven says, what then, what the people of Israel sought to earnestly, sought so earnestly, they did not obtain the elect among them did, but the others were hardened as it is written. God gave them the spirit of stupor, eyes that could not see and ears that could not hear to this very day. Now, let me paraphrase that in my Ebonic language. Technically, what it says is, if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. In other words, you can't fix it. If you could fix it, there would be absolutely no need for grace. Grace, um, according to even what Moses shared on yesterday, is something we don't deserve, we did not earn. It is literally a gift. It is something that you possess that if you employ living a sin-free life becomes less of an obligation and more of an onus. It's as if you put it on and you begin to wear the grace that was already gifted to you. It then empowers you to extend it to others because you observe that it has worked for you. In doing so, now you observe it. What happens when you grab a hold of it in the revelation of the reality that grace is a gift that was given because Jesus hung, bled, and died and knew that it would be necessary, i.e. he gives it to us brand new every single day because he knows that it's a requirement. Your grace now then increases and it empowers you to approach the throne of grace in a matter that you are guilt-free because you recognize that you're not guilty. 
i.e. you then begin to excel in the knowledge of the understanding of grace. And now it begins to appear in your life because you're standing under it, knowing that you were chosen for it. As I begin to delve a little bit deeper into this teaching, it then started to take me into the reality that some people, because of the traditions of old, will never embrace the truth of grace having abolished the law because Jesus came and fulfilled it. It takes a mature heart to understand that, number one, Jesus chose us. We did not choose him. We choose to adhere, submit, and obey him as a result of surrendering our will to him through the power of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4 says it like this. As a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Again, we were called. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope when we are called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and the Father of all, who is over all, through all and in all. Listen to this. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ has appointed it. This is why it says, when he ascends on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. So check it out. He gave gifts to his people. The question you have to ask yourself is, are you his people? Is he your God and are you his child? While we recognize that many are called but chosen are few, the reality is that without grace, it is impossible. Uh, let, me, let me back it up. Without employing the gift of grace, it is impossible to operate fully in faith. For we know that it is through grace by faith that we are made righteous, right? It means that living a sin-free life is not as difficult as we had previously perceived. If you consider what the word of God says, I used to think that uh, the word that says be separate, come from among them, was speaking about the people that I would spend time with that are not in Christ. When in reality, the truth of the matter for me, and this is my interpretation, is that the more I understand how much Jesus loves me, the more I understand that there are things that he put in place by going to the cross, by staying on the cross, by going to the grave, by staying in the grave, by getting up on the third day with all power in heaven and earth in his hands that he gave me direct access to. Have you ever been in a church service and or ever heard anyone imply that even the idea of apostles was uh, a thing of old? Even the idea of impartation and empowering somebody to walk in a specific grace by the laying on of hands was unnecessary or pretty much futile in effort. According to this word, which is New Testament, which is A.D. after the death of Christ, which is the relevant faith that we walk in, which carries the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is considered the good news that gives and brings hope to all that would hear and adhere it who have not been impacted by the reality that their hearts may have been hardened. When I started to read it and I began to understand that not only does Jesus desire for us to walk in the fullness of his joy, but the gift of grace empowers us that even if yesterday you blew it, he has left a measure in place 
that has nothing to do with the traditions of yesteryear and the law of Moses. As you see, they rejected Stephen because he wasn't preaching and teaching the law. He was preaching and teaching and liberating those that had the capacity to adhere to the reality that the gift of grace is for all. The gift of grace is for all that have the ability to grow up and stand in the truth of God's word, as opposed to the teaching of Moses and not that it was irrelevant and not that even the Old Testament is irrelevant. However, we make a choice of how we choose to live. I've discovered that the more I learn to love Jesus and I focus on the reality that he gave me gifts to thrive, I'm not as frustrated with attempting to live a sin-free life and holiness becomes my walk as opposed to my fight. I am not fighting to live holy. I am operating in the truth of God's word because I know that it's based on the reality that he loved me enough to empower me to overcome sin with the truth of his word. In doing so, it empowers me to empower others, right? It empowers me to stand with hope and know without a shadow of a doubt, according to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. Listen, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no man can boast. So technically I'm saying that, listen, I don't have the power to get me together. I don't have the wherewithal. I'm not that smart. I'm not that sharp. I can't keep me out of sin. The only thing that'll keep me out of sin is recognizing that I have a gift that's greater than my will if I submit myself underneath the truth of the word of God which is life to me. It's life to you. Hebrews 4 and 16 says, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. So now here we are with our gift of grace, approaching God in his grandeur with his uh, grace on the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our times of need. That means that when something's going on that's bigger than how you can understand it, when something's going on that's grander than your capacity, you have action at now taking your gifted with grace self. You possess grace. You wear grace. You extend grace. You observe grace. You are increased in grace. Now here you are approaching grace. One moment. Here you are approaching grace, um, asking that God would extend to you even the more grace. Now you're standing under it. In doing so, listen, 1 Peter 4 and 10 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. As faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So I didn't just make that up. Grace has multiple forms. So let me tell you what I saw. You guys know my mind is a little bit different. Eric Dawson and I laugh and joke about uh, Wonder Twin Powers Activate, right? Shape of whatever, you know how they used to say all those uh, shape of water, whatever they needed to do in that moment. Um, if they needed to become liquid, they would become liquid. If they needed to become uh, a hammer, they would become a hammer. Grace has the form necessary for that particular issue that you're dealing with. That's not my opinion. That's the word of God. Again, first Peter four and 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. That means that if, in fact, my brother or my sister is in grief, 
and they need someone to grieve with them effectively. They need someone to mourn with them. God extends to us the grace necessary to be compassionate enough as we are operating in a form of grace that has the the um, ability to be what your sister or your brother needs in an operation of service. So not only does that um, d- does that empower you to employ God in and employ grace in different measures and different operations, James four and six says, but He gives us more grace. This is why the scripture says God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Sometimes you have to acquiesce to the situation, the circumstance, and even the understanding and intellect of someone else in an uh, uh, in an effort to employ the different forms of grace necessary. What I had to learn, and, and this is um, one of my transparent moments, I understand things differently. Um, I spend a lot of time studying because it's that season in my life where I have a responsibility because of what I'm called to. It does not mean that if I meet a babe, I have the right to um, feel as if or move as if what they have to say or how they think or how they move around is less than me. There was a season in my life that I didn't understand how people didn't get the simplicity of the word of God. And if you're not careful, it'll put you in a place, self-righteousness. I've been there. It is not what God would call us to, lest I would be able to boast of my own power, when in fact, it's simply because I've employed the various uh, operations of the gift of grace in my life in an effort to extend the grace that Jesus extended to me to my brothers and sisters in the faith. Second Corinthians 8 and 7 says, but since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also in also excel in this grace giving. I had to learn how to excel in giving grace that everybody's not called to what I'm called to. Everybody is not expected to understand the way that I understand. Everybody is not entreated to know what I know because that's not their mantle. That's not the thing that they stand under. That's not the thing that they are called to operate in. And so I just want to encourage us to be mindful of the people around you. Now get this, Titus 2 and 11 says, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Now, remember I said grace can appear Again, it's another form of the reality of the truth of God's word. Romans 6 and 14 says, for sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but you are under grace. Remember I said you can be under it. It can appear you can be under it and you can be chosen for it. I read already Romans 11 and 6, but I want to say it again with that understanding. And if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If it were, grace would no longer be grace. Acts 15 and 11 says, no, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are, which means that when we extend grace to others, we recognize that their form of grace in that particular place, posture, or position um, may not be the grace auspice that you're operating in. They may not have gotten the increase. They may not have gotten um, the operation of extending grace. They may not have observed or know to wear grace. John 1 and 14 says, the word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who became from the father, 
full of grace and truth. Now, because we have action at being in Christ and he being in us, listen to this, considering we've all been gifted with grace, if he is full of grace, guess what that means for you? You too can be full of grace. Grace in such a way that you'd have the power to walk into a room and someone experience the grace of God that you wear. Then you can operate in the reality that after they experience the grace that you wear, you can entreat them and extend the gift of grace that is on your life. With that said, God empowers each and every one of us, not only to live for him, but to live for him in such a way that it changes your mind about even contemplating sin. Now, how do you know this, Dion? Because my wonder twin powers have been activated and I fooled around and I got the understanding, the interpretation that God's love is far greater than my sin. Not only is his love far greater than my sin, but because I have capacity. Isaiah um, uh, 64 says, stretch forth your curtains. Um, strengthen your stakes for soon you'll be bursting on the left and on the right. I can be just as full of grace as I am of love. And because every day his mercy and his grace is new every morning, I can employ grace on the areas where I've not yet gotten the revelation of grace being applied in one of its different forms to that particular area of your life. So what do you mean, Dion? Say, for instance, you, you have a habit of um, being cynical or snobby upon approach or you have a tendency to shoot lugs or be vindictive or venomous periodically you know that nice nasty that we front with our religiosity and the tra traditions of old there comes a time where that's no longer acceptable that is as grievous a sin to Jesus as it is to uh, sleep unwed or to commit adultery or murder. We tend to register sin on the areas that we can relate it in with whatever measures we think the punishment is. Grace cancels all that, right? But when you start to submit yourself to the truth of the word of God, and you start to focus on loving him as opposed to being good, or doing kind things or community service and all of that is wonderful. Do not misunderstand what I'm saying. But I believe that when we start to understand the power of grace and the reality that he died to extend it to us, to increase it in us, to give us a right to approach it, to a right to approach him, to give us the power to excel in it, to actually possess the reality that we are full of grace, because we were gifted it, the laws of Moses and the law will not be our ruling factor. I have a feeling that we will begin to operate collectively and collaboratively with the agenda of Christ and not our own agenda. I can remember being young in the faith and feeling like I had to work and jump through fiery rings to get to a place where I wasn't willfully sinning. Not really recognizing that even if you look at somebody and you judge them or you make a decision about them based on your opinion and you put them somewhere. Um, that's a sin of the same measure as, you know, when promiscuity is a question or, uh, Stealing or lying or swindling or hoodwinking, right? So, so I'll give you this example, and I said it once before. Now, here we are. We're looking at um, Jesse, who was exonerated of all charges for lying about establishing uh, a ploy to be beat up. He was crucified publicly. He was, I mean, murdered. He was pummeled left and right. Social media wore him a new one. And I mean, every single channel. Do you hear me? They, they absolutely killed the man. And now here we are in a whole nother week. This was just a week ago that he was exonerated. Nobody has anything to say about Jesse, not even sorry. 
Now, I'm going to give you a whole different aspect. The, the question is, would you have been able to, um, based upon how people judge him and what the perception was, and even if, if it's the reality, would you have been able to be a, a sister or a brother in the faith and use your gift to extend grace to him after having heard the, the stories and the testimonies of the people, would you have been able to um, overlook what the majority said in an effort to empower him to thrive and to live? Now, let me give you another example. R. Kelly is his public trial currently. Um, he, he's not yet fully made to a court hearing. He's not yet fully gone through um, the, the judicial system. And still, he is being pulverized. And while it, it, we have certain evidences based on what we think we see, based on what we think we've been exposed to that say that he's guilty. But the, the question I have for you today is if you ran into R. Kelly and it was just you and him in a room, would you be able to minister to him? Would you be able to extend to him the grace that Jesus extends to you, even though you may not have the exact same struggle? Your sin may not be a sin, but would you be able to truthfully, um, without being mean and cantankerous and nasty and judging him in your mind before you open your mouth, would he be able to see you wearing grace? Would the grace of God be resting on you in such a way that when you opened your mouth, that the love of Jesus poured out of you in such a fashion that it empowered him to be able to pour out his guts to you? Would you be able to really take if he told you, yes, I'm guilty. I slept with all them kids. I molested young women and I've, I've done things that are absolutely um, deplorable according to societal view. Would you be able to extend to him the grace of Jesus? Would, would the grace of God appear on you? Would it be obvious that you rested under God's grace? Would he be able to assemble that you were chosen for grace and you are excelling in grace so much so that you walked him through deliverance? to a place of salvation if in fact it was stated that R. Kelly gave his life to Christ today based on public opinion and he turned and he confessed and he renounced those deeds if you saw him the day after that would you still send him to hell it's a serious question and it's a hard question for people who have lived under legalistic views and were trained and taught to think legalistically. And while I get it, um, the reality is that your sin may not be his sin. Your struggle may not be his struggle. Uh, would, would you be able to extend to someone grace knowing that they are high as Kuda Brown? Drunk as all get up. If they walked into the church that you were at, would you couple with the deacons who, who are ready to put them out? The mothers who have made a decision that you got to get out of here. <laughs> you can be anywhere but here. I know you need some help, but you're not going to find it here because you drunk. Go sober up and come back. Right? Come down and come back. Now, you guys know me um, and you know that my life is called to a place of transparency that lots and lots of people um, don't want to go. And, and I don't, I don't mean in any shape, form or fashion to um, be disloyal to my bloodline, but my, my oldest son is struggling. And one of two things could have happened. I mean, as frustrated as I am, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to say that I was, I am. My frustration lies not in his struggle, but my frustration lies in my helplessness to be able to bail him out of it. And the reality is understanding that there is an extension of grace that he needs, not only to be well, but to thrive. There's an extension of grace that I received. 
in an effort to be well. And I'm, I'm just so grateful that at this point, um, what I experienced, um, and, and not to any fault of, of my authority figures, but what, what I experienced was not always full of grace. Um, not at the hand of the churches that I attended or um, the quote unquote, the aged saints. I won't call them mature because there's a level of maturity that changes how you handle um, God's word. And each and every one of you, just FYI, are God's word living. He spoke you. Um, and what I want to do is I want to remind you that the extension of grace is not just for the world and the world system. The extension of grace is for your bloodline because ultimately the enemy wants your kids and your grandkids and your great, 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 great grandkids. And so that when we learn how to be grace, when we learn how to wear grace in such a way that it's contagious, when you focus on living a life that pleases God, based on reciprocity because you love him back while we may never be able to measure up to the amount of love that he extends to us. We at least have action at approaching his throne of grace with the same love that he extended to us, not focused on our sin life or our sin nature. And we relieve ourselves of some of the frustration of not being able to do a thing successfully based on working, based on demonstration of how good we think we can be because that, that's, not, that's not really real. None are righteous without grace and faith. I pray that something I said empowered you to free yourself a little bit. And I'd encourage you to study the word and, and allow God to minister to you through his spirit. Don't take my word for it. Don't take a preacher's word for it. Don't listen to uh, any and everything that everybody says. Get to know the word for yourself. As I pass the call to Sabrina. Father, this morning it is an honor to stand before you and drink in your sovereignty and just the weight of your grace. Father, it is an honor to stand under the mantle of the anointing that reminds us of how much your grace abounds. When sin does much more abound, your grace isn't just there, but you extend greater grace to us. Father, we take a moment and just really, really think about how rich and how necessary your grace is to our everyday life. And I stand in awe of you as God, how mindful you are of us, that you set aside this amazing phenomenon, your riches at your son's expense, your unmerited favor that you knew that we would need not just once, but that we would need daily. And as we take that in, our hearts rejoice over your grace, over the sufficiency of it, over the all-knowing power of it, over its ever-reaching power, over its covering power. Your grace is amazing. Your grace is necessary, and we can't take it or your sacrifice for granted on today or any moment for it. It is because of your grace and your mercy that we are not consumed because your compassions never fail. They are so amazing that you give it to us every morning. Great is your faithfulness in your distribution of grace towards us. So God, we thank you for grace this morning. We thank you that it is not only something that we can receive, but it is something that we can put on. It is something that we can step into. It is something that we can have and that we can embody. We thank you that we can be the walking representation and demonstration of your grace. 
We thank you that your grace will soften our hearts. We thank you that your grace will lengthen our patience. We thank you that your grace will make us that much more aware of how we go in and out amongst people. We thank you that your grace is an educator. We thank you that your grace makes us aware. Your grace is our sense to be who you've called us to be. We thank you for grace on this morning. We thank you that it is weighty. It sits on top of us. It covers us. We thank you that it is the power to lift us up, to draw us closer to you. We thank you that your grace is what drives us to live for you. We thank you that we understand now just how awesome and amazing and good of a father that you are to us, God, that you knew that we would need grace. And you you set it aside for us. God, we thank you that it is in an unending supply, so much so that it even extends to our children. We thank you that grace is their inheritance on today. We thank you, God, that even though they seem to be in turmoil, they seem to be out of control, that they are yet in the palm of your hand, which means that they are under your control. And anything under your control is never out of control. So we thank you for the grace to rest in the fact that you got the whole world in your hand. God, we thank you for healing power. We thank you for that you can comfort those that are bereaved. God, we thank you for the lives of those that have transitioned and the legacy. God, we ask that you would extend peace that surpasses all understanding, just like your word said that you would. So we thank you that at this moment, right now, Lisa is comforted. Her heart is made glad. We thank you that right now, Renee feels the embrace of your loving arms around her and that she is encouraged, in fact, to believe and to thank you for grace. God, we thank you for Dee Dee's dad. We thank you for Gloria's dad and that he's getting better. We thank you that we can call upon you just like we did months ago on his behalf. And we can declare that you are the same God. And if you did it before, you can do it again. So we thank you for grace that goes, God, where his children are not. We thank you for grace that can go in the room and minister to doctors and nurses. We thank you for grace that can say, "Mm -mm, not yet, not this time. I'm not done yet. We thank you for grace. We thank you for the grace that's covering babies, God the ones that are waiting to be born, the ones that are in incubation. We thank you for those twins that are coming through to Jeff and pretty Patrice. We thank you for that beautiful baby girl that's on her way to Moses and Nicole. And God, I thank you for baby Nyla that's on her way to me. I thank you for the grace that they will step into the moment their lungs hit air. We Thank you, God, for the legacy of prayer and praise that they step into. We thank you that they already will be yours and you will be theirs simply because of that you've chosen to bless each and every individual family with them. We thank you for grace that will cover their safe arrival. We thank you, God. You are an amazing God. You think of everything. And because of that, we can declare that no matter what our life look like, no matter what the circumstances will say, there is nothing too hard for you. You are great and mighty. You're mighty in all your ways. God, we bless you for grace on this morning. So, Victor, as we take our phones off of mute, I encourage you to worship God for the measure of grace that you are living out right now. I encourage you to worship God for the measure of grace that it continues to cover your lives, your mouth, your tongue, your thoughts. Hallelujah. Your health. Hallelujah. I encourage you to worship God for the measure of grace. Thank you for your grace. That protects you as you come and as you go. As you cover and as you sleep. 
As you make decisions, oh, good and not so good, we thank you for second and third tandem. We thank you. Hallelujah. We can pray that it doesn't require us to pay the penalty for how we have lived. God, I thank you for your grace. For every time you've covered us with other people, hallelujah, and you kept them from seeing the intentions of our hearts when they were right. You kept them from seeing the true motives of our hearts when they wasn't right. I thank you for the grace that covers and protects us from us. God, I thank you. Your grace is amazing. It is unfailing. And we need to know and understand the depth of it. But God, that we will understand. We thank you. And we are as all that you would give it to us, God. And we ask you to understand that same grace. Oh, Hallelujah that you give to us that you everyone we see God. You give grace and you are not busy with it. You don't respect the person with it. So God, I ask you to give Hallelujah. We don't give one day. Grace. Hallelujah. We don't pick and choose who we give it to God. I ask that you would have to have us to be perfect demonstration of grace. And that we will give it freely, God. We will give it to people who don't deserve it. In our eyes, God, but we know that because we didn't deserve it, you didn't want to take us down. We don't deserve it, God. We take you to your grace that opens the eyes of our hearts so that we can see the truth, God. We thank you for the love and down here, Lord. You are a loving and a blessing, God. You are full of grace and mercy, God. What I'm missing here. I pity you, you glory, bursting at the oh, seams with grace and with mercy. It's dripping from your hands, God. You are a loving God, and I thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for who you are, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord God. Thank you for every appearance. Lord, of grace, whether we're under it, Lord God, whether it appears, Lord God, whether we walk in it, Lord God, we just thank you, Lord, for every evidence of grace, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Today you have made. We have made the rejoice and we are glad in it, Lord God. We praise your name this morning, Lord. We lift you to the sky, Lord God. We have made you, Lord God. We have made you, Lord God. We have made you, Lord God. Worship in the spirit of that love. Every time we pray, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, I thank you. No, Lord, God, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, God. I thank you that they shall inherit the earth. We love you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. We call upon you this day, Lord God. We call upon you for everything that we need. We call upon you for your grace and your mission, Lord God. We call upon you for your grace and your mission, Lord God. We call upon you for your knowledge, Lord God. I call upon you for relationship with Christ. We call upon you, Lord, that we know who you are and all that is, Lord, that you are our source, Lord God. You are our light, Lord God. And I ask you, Lord, that you would be with us, Lord God. You are our light, 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 Lord God. We bless your name, God. We call you all hallelujah. We say thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. Thank you, God, for all that you do. Thank you, God, for loving us, Lord God. Thank you for the glory that you've given us, Lord God. Your word says your grace is sufficient. We are sufficient. So we claim to our mindset, Lord God. All test, Lord Jesus. God. Any fear, Lord God, is removed because you are a great love like you are. And you are Gracious Lord God, and you are rich in mercy, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Call you up, Lord God. We bless your name.
name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for this day. God bless us as we go about in the different places, the marketplace, and protect us from our hurt, harm, and danger, Lord God. I pray for those who don't know you, Lord God. I pray for those who don't know you, Lord God. Let us go out without judgment, Lord God. So show us who you would have us. Hallelujah. Have a good Hallelujah. word about you, Lord God. Yes. Show us, Lord God. Show us your glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah for the ability to come before your throne. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you, God. Not asking you for anything, not seeking your hand, but God, we seek your face today. We thank you for the grace that will go with us in and out of the marketplace, God. We thank you for traveling grace and mercy. We thank you for the many ways that your grace will show up in our lives. On today, we thank you for the ability that it comes in different forms just when we need it the most. So we thank you for those that will experience grace, hallelujah, as gas money on today. We thank you for those that will experience your grace as bills being paid. We thank you for those that will experience your grace as food on today. We thank you for those that will experience your grace as an open door. We thank you for those that will experience it as a closed door. We thank you for those that will experience your grace as a hand of an angel stepping in between danger that is unseen. And sometimes danger seen. We thank you for those that will experience protection and will come to recognize it as your grace. We thank you for every opportunity that you will give us today to be the grace that somebody needs. We thank you, God, for just another opportunity to be chosen to live this life, God. We thank you that a life of holiness is not our struggle. It is our pleasure, and we thank you for that on today. God, these blessings and all others, we ask in your precious son Jesus' name as I pass the call back to Dion. Thank you for grace. Amen. Well, hallelujah, and to God be the glory. Uh, We thank you that because of his extension of grace, it is not a struggle, but it is our pleasure. That was good, Brittany. I like it. And I uh, uh, completely agree. Um, Today I can say it's my pleasure to live a life of holiness, not because I'm scared of hell, That's all right. But because it's my pleasure, hallelujah, it's my pleasure to honor God with my life, my pleasure to honor God with my deeds. It is my absolute pleasure. I am honored that he would choose me to live a life of grace in its variation of form so that someone else would see the extension of his grace and mercy as a direct result of him just being a merciful and a gracious God. Amen. To God be the glory, Sabrina. Thank you uh, for your prayer, Valacita. Thank you. This morning I didn't uh, mention my thanks for always hosting and greeting with such grace. I appreciate um, each of you. And um, I just want to say good morning and give an opportunity for those that are online to say good morning, God morning, great morning, who's online. Good morning, sister. It's Pam. I love you, Victory family. God bless you all. Have a blessed day. Hey, Pam. We love you back. Amen. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Sanajay. Hey, Sanajay. Good morning. Anybody else? Hey, good morning. Hey, darling. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Corey. Good morning. 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 Morning. Bernice. Hey, Bernice. Great morning. Good morning, family. It's Moni. In the middle. Good morning. Good morning. It's Michelle. Good morning. 
Hey, Michelle. Great morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's Twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Good morning, family. It's Sister Veronica. Hey, Sister Veronica. Great morning. You mean to tell me Eric is not going to say her name, Juju? I'm confused. You don't put one. her on early enough. I, I I say I say good morning early in the morning. Oh oh oh. Morning. No, I I be on. I just be on. I be on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Victory Family. It's Dondria. Good morning. Hey, Dondria. Anybody else before we move on? Good morning, it's Natasha. Hi, Natasha. Amen. Well, again, I greet you in the name of the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for um, your sacrifice of our, what we call our daily tithes in spending time in God's presence. I'm, I'm grateful to be in your company this morning. And um, just wanted to encourage you, if you have any questions, comments, commentary, to feel free to share this morning. Anybody? Hey, it's Dee Dee. Can you hear me? I can. Good morning, sis. Thank you for what you said about grace and the reminder of the sin um that that right there did something to me it's because sin is sin and I think we get confused sometimes if we're, you know, not careful we may uh put sin in a category. So it, then you made a good uh analogy when you talked about Jesse and how he was crucified. I mean you're right. Nobody's saying anything now. Um and the same thing with R. Kelly. Just using it all how we have to be careful and just to extend that same grace if we really Think about it and how God has been so graceful. We don't deserve none of it, but just the whole um, grace and the growing in grace and to, to just really get into the word and study for ourselves so that we're not judging and we're not, you know, not really loving the way that we should and we're not extending grace and mercy um, the way that God has for us. So I just appreciate you, sis, as always. And then, Sabrina, remind me when I see you, I'm I'm, I'm going to slap you for real because that prayer, um, you, yeah. It's just a, a wonderful morning. I love my Declare Victory family. And thank you for praying for Daddy. We, Our family appreciates it. And you're right, Bree. He did it before. He'll do it again. So um, it's just a good morning to have, to, to have a great morning. I love you. Yes, it is definitely a good day to have a great morning. <laughs> I agree. Amen. Anybody else have anything? I, I just I only have one, one question today for real. Anybody else have anything? Good morning. Good morning. This is Juliet. I hear Juliet, and then I think I heard Gloria. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go in that order. Go ahead, Ju, since it's your birthday. It's your birthday. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I wanted to say this was a powerful, um, like, everyone's powerful, but this one, as far as grace, like the way you unwrapped it. I definitely need to go re re listen to it. But I want the poem that you had this morning that you that you started off with. I need that. I need to write that down so I can rehearse that to myself every day about grace. Well it that was Acts the sixth chapter and I read it in its entirety. When you were talking about grace, you under it, you possessed by it. Oh, 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 the the different things. I was yeah. I was tripping. Yeah, you know wait, let me um, let me That's a poem. Let me get my stick. I wanna remember that. <clears throat> well, not only did I did I see it, but I had never uh, as always I had never seen it that way. Um, you know, we we look at you know, think about approaching the throne of grace and we think about the the fact that we the grace is extended, but it it's uh I saw possess it. Wear it, extend it, observe it, increase it, approach it, excel in it, 
it can appear, we are chosen for it, and we are under it. Bear it, extend it, increase it, approach it, and what else? I missed it. Uh, I'll type it all out. Possess it, wear it, extend it, observe it, increase it, approach it, excel in it, and then it appears you are under it and you are chosen for it. Beautiful. That's beautiful. I mean, that just encompasses everything Grace is. Man, <laughs> listen, blew my mind. <laughs> just like wow, my mom, you were saying. I was trying to, I was trying to keep up with you. I was like, right, okay, because that's something that's, that's almost like a decoration. You know what I'm saying? Every right. day, you know, to, to meditate on, if you just meditate on one at a time, is is a decoration about Grace because I've never seen it unpacked like that. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that um, that it's been extended to us, you know, that, you know, in the word, and you you broke it down in many ways, and, and that's why I think I listened to it again. But you know, that just encompasses it, it encompasses it all, um, in just in that saying that you that God gave to you this morning to give to us. It's, I'm so blessed. Thank you for allowing God to work through you, and um, how you're impacting it to us. More specific. So, like you know, so you, you wrote the vision down, and those that here run with it, so I'm running with it. Okay? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead, Good Lord. Go ahead. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Okay, hold on. Morning. I heard Gloria, but I hear somebody else in the background. Who is that? You can go right after Gloria. Who is that? Sister Julia. Oh, hey, Sister Julia. Okay, go ahead, Gloria. Okay, good morning, everybody. God bless you, Dion. Thank you for the lesson, lesson on grace. And um, what Julia just asked you to repeat, if you can put it on the you – you said you was going to type it up. Can you put it in the room so I can pull it off? I'm getting on the road this morning to go down and see Daddy and see my mom because i got to take her to the cardiologist. But you know God's grace is sufficient. It's sufficient no matter what. And I just thank him for him allowing me to be filled with his grace and by his grace and keeping and sustaining and blessing and strengthening and carrying and encouraging. And I just bless God for his grace. And I thank him for you all and his grace in my life. With you, I love you guys. We love you back. Amen. Go ahead, Sister Julia. Good morning, my sister. What an awesome declaration! What an awesome declaration did this morning, and I, I will remember every word of grace in what you said on my special day. I'm gonna keep that. Keep. I want to keep that in my phone. Thank you so much, my sister. God bless you. You keep on doing the good work because we got a lot of more for you to do. I love you, sister. And I love you, princess. Thank you so much. And I plan to continue. Amen. Yes, Lord. Lord got you. <laughs> yes. And for today, you did that on my day. It's that special to me. Amen. Oh, thank you. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Sister Julia. Hey, I think it's Sister Julia's birthday today. Mine's is on the same day as your Wonder Twin. <laughs> oh, Sister Julia birthday. And I just said, Juju, well, listen, happy birthday, Sister Julia. Look, I mean, uh, Sister Julia, I didn't realize it. I'm sorry. I, I thought I was tripping. But Don't be sorry, hey, Sister. I still love you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I love you, too. Amen. Amen. Anybody else have anything? Praise the Lord. This is Cornell from San Francisco. God bless you. Thank you for that encouraging word. It really, really blessed my life this morning. I like how you use the examples about um, R. Kelly and and the other gentlemen about wearing the grace and showing love and compassion with other people. That just 
brought a tear in my eye while I'm working. I just thank God for declaring victory, and I ask that you will continue to pray my strength in the Lord, and God bless everybody. I love you. Amen, and we love you. Thank you for sharing, Brother Cardinal. It's good to hear your voice this morning. Amen. Anybody else have anything? Amen. Well, I promise that I only have one question this morning. And um, if there not be a plethora of questions thereafter, um, what what we'll do is give you back some time. Um, I want to know if you ran into a pedophile and you knew that they were pedophiles, would you have the capacity to deliver um, grace? Would you have the capacity to administer grace to them to the degree that it pulled them out of darkness? Would you be able to demonstrate the love of Jesus in such a way that they were overwhelmed by your compassion because you didn't bother yourself with judging them because you knew that that wouldn't help? You actually took the time to love on them in such a way that they began to feel the manifestation of God's love through the grace that he's given to you, the gift and the measure of grace that he's given to you to administer to others. Can we talk about that for one quick second? Anybody got anything? Anybody got a a statement? Or Even if you're having a hard time and you can't see how that could be possible. Dion, this is Diane. I just appreciate your your message this morning, and you gave both scenarios of Justice Smollett and and um, what's his name? I can't think of his name. Oh my goodness! No, you just talked about R. Kelly. R. Kelly, yeah. And so it, it's it's this way. It's um. One time, my pastor, I'm going to share this, he gave, a, he gave an example of a woman that he spoke with that had had a sex change, and she had had a sex change, and then she got saved, and she, in the midst of a sex change, her and her partner adopted a child. And when she accepted Christ, she said, how do I tell this child that I had a sex change? I am their mother. And I thought about that. And it, it's, it's the same as homosexuality. And I look at it like that. God loves us no matter what. Even even when we're wrong, he still loves us. It's the sin that he hates. And so in anything, anything that we do, we're all born into sin. And, and in this life, we are, we have two natures we're warring against. And so even my sin, your sin, sin has no category. We put sin in a category. So if if we sin and God still has mercy and grace for us, we are to extend that same grace and mercy regardless of what the person has done because God sees his sin no no smaller or bigger than than the sin that we commit. So for me myself, I can find grace and show someone grace because that same grace has been given to me and God has given me the same grace that he extends to everyone else. And in your declaration, you said grace has been extended to us. 
So therefore, we're to extend that same grace. And for me, myself, because of where God has me, I can extend that same grace because the same God that extended the grace to me extended to each and every one of us on this call, each and every one that we run into in this world, on this on the street, wherever we run into them at, that same grace has been extended to all of us. Because if it had not been extended to us, how can we extend grace? But because God extended to us, we're to extend that same grace. God says he blessed us so that we can be a blessing to others. And that means with everything. That's my take on it, and I appreciate your your message this morning. And I think, and I pray that each one of us will take everything that was said and apply it to our own life. Because when we hear the message, we are to apply the message and not take the message to condemn others but to build others up. Amen. Thank you for that Amen. message. Amen. Thank you for that, Lady Diane. I, I want to make sure that I put healthy measures in place because what we don't want to do is somebody in a demonstration of grace bring a pedophile into their house <laughs> in, in an attempt to extend uh, grace and mercy. You got to make sure that you use wisdom and sound judgment um, even in ministry, Amen. you know, I mean, and, Amen. and we know that the motives of our heart are pure. We know that our our desire is to, you know, empower others, but don't but don't be foolish in doing so and throw caution to wind and act like you know this person does not need counseling to undo years of bad learning and bad teaching. So, I just wanted to say Amen. that unless somebody say I told uh, y'all on on the line this morning to go pick up some pedophiles and try to rehabilitate them. You are not licensed for that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Let's just make sense now. Amen. Amen. Anybody else get anything? Have a share. Um, something that may have empowered you. Good morning. Hey, Krishanda. Hey, actually, it's uh Courtney, Krishanda's daughter. So I guess oh, apple doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> Um, hi. Um, I really appreciated your message um, today, and I appreciated your question. Um, I haven't been on the call in a really long time, um, and yesterday I didn't have an example of a, I mean, I don't know of a pedophile, but I had an example um, of when grace needed to be granted, and my ego definitely got in the way because that's one of my biggest struggles that I deal with. Um, and I was coming up uh from the train I live in Chicago right now but I was coming up from the train station and there was a man uh maybe in his 20s uh harassing this woman going down into the station and he was calling her a B and calling her out her name because she wouldn't acknowledge him or give him the time of day and I I had just experienced something on the train and so I was a little emotionally riled up and I was walking I was walking out the train and the guy extend, extended his hand to me and I looked at him crazy and walked away and then he said something, uh, he called me on my name and said something disrespectful to me. And my ego jumped in um, and I uh, said to him, why would, why would I shake your hand? Nobody, nobody knows you. And I, it was just from a completely emotional, um, angry position. And... Um, I, then I ended up talking to my mom later, and she was telling me about the uh, the call Moses had done the previous day. Um, and I feel like with my mom, it's, she's always a good barometer sometimes for me to hear when I'm being a fool and when I'm being someone who wants to receive and be wise and receive information versus be offended, when my ego wants to be offended. And mm-hmm. it was just, I'm just so glad I got on the call today because it was a reminder to me of the reason why I couldn't give that man grace is because I was so emotional and I didn't, and, and that's a balance for me. I still, cause I don't know if you, I, I, in the beginning of the year, when I started going on this call, I was saying how I'm working to make God the center of my everything. 
And the reason why I came in and spoke to that man versus God was because I didn't ask God what to say because I've also been trying to work on when God wants me to speak and when God doesn't want me to speak. Um, and so I'm just grateful to to to, the, to today to be thinking differently and to release what that was yesterday and know that I have another chance, hopefully with someone else, to either receive grace or specifically to give it to someone else when they deserve it. When I want to be emotional, how I can take pause and think about, because especially because we're all humans, we all go through things, we all get hurt, and a lot of people aren't given grace. A lot of people are told um, that they're wrong or or whatever, and I I just want to make sure that I'm practicing giving grace because it's not given to people, and that's why there's so many hurt people, because we can't be patient with one another. Um, So I'm just really grateful for the message, and I really hope my mind and my heart are um, uh, absorbing it um, and changing because I I do not want to struggle with that anymore. So thank you. Amen. Awesome share, Princess, and a perfect direction, and by the grace of God, you have the mommy you have um, that was able to sow that truth into you, and that's why we need grace and mercy every day. (laughs) <laughs> it is a perfect example of the truth of the necessity of grace because we are bound to foil it. We are bound to blow it. Um, probably at some point today, even if we don't recognize it, the beauty is that you recognize it and your desire is to correct the behavior. But the reality is that if you employ the reality that you possess it, that you wear it, that you have the ability to extend it, you have the right to observe it, it is increased upon request. We can approach it, you can excel in it, it can appear because you stand under it because you were chosen for it. So as long as you know that those things, those measures are in place for you, um, it's not even just that your heart and your mind observe it. Um, It's not even that they uh, absorb it. But it's really that you start to employ the reality that there is a gift that lives on the inside of you that you were chosen for. And the, the prayer should be that your heart not be darkened, that your eyes not be darkened, that you not be blinded to the reality that you have everything inside of you you need to not only accomplish but to supersede your goal. You got this. And next time you won't blow it that will come to mind instantly. I can assure you because you're aware of it. Oh, man. Thank you so much for sharing. That was good stuff. I have a question, uh, Miss uh, Sister. This is Cornell from San Francisco. Um, okay. how, how, do, how, how would a person wear grace in a scenario like this? A person is faithful, love the Lord, go to church and ministry, and now they have a job that's like taking their time away from being at the you know the Bible study and 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 working a lot and and then uh, the individual you know pastor says to him man I think it'd be in the best interest that we take you off the ministry team because you're not here and mind you the individual is calling and letting the pastor know not being rebellious being humble and the and the, the young individual is just stuck now they don't even want to have nothing to do with it. The, the uh, institution of the church because of that bad experience. How do you wear grace and encourage somebody in that situation? Well, the, the first thing I would encourage the person that was offended to do um, is to forgive. People can only give you what they have, nothing more, nothing less. If somebody doesn't have the capacity to look outside of, because you you got to remember, all of us, deal with the same set of circumstances, our egos, our personal personas, our decisions to live and operate the way that seems accommodating to us individually and independently. And the institution of the church is literally just a place where we gather. That person, um, if they take that whole action personal, and they hold the church institution accountable for one man's decision, it's because they're kids. And so that's where individual, independent ministry comes from. Um, The Bible says, guard your heart with all of your diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. 
His issue is not church. His issue is rejection. So when you get to the root matter of what's really ailing or eating at the person who's offended, I'm sure that there's some type of father figure influence that every pastor carries. And for a fatherless son, chances are he's experienced some rejection from his natural father, and that's what he looks at it as, as rejection and abandonment. So I would really um, wear grace in in helping him understand the other person's position, because the reality is it's not personal. It's individual. Make sense? Amen. That's good. Thank you. That was good. Man, I declare victory. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Um, today I want to give you a homework assignment. I want you to find people, places, and things that you can occupy grace in. I want you to look for opportunities to demonstrate grace, to be grace, to walk in grace and authority, to pursue grace. Um, Anything related to or associated with grace, I want you to make it your business today to explore opportunities to extend grace to others. Simply to empower somebody else. And do it in such a way that you are conscious of your choices. Is that is that the reasonable request? Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Does yes. anybody else have anything? Anybody? Anybody? Amen. Well, if not, with that being said, again, today is Wednesday. It's our fast day. We'll meet back at 5 o'clock. And I want to personally apologize for last week. Diane was not well. And I was in a meeting uh, that ran over. I didn't even realize that it had run over. Um, but I want to thank those of you that fasted last week and showed up. Um, but we will be, somebody will be present today. So with that said, listen, I love you, but I promise God loves you the most. Um, and I am expecting some great things to happen. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless you. And I'll meet you back here at 5 p.m. Have a wonderful day, you guys. I love you all. I love you all. We love you too, Yvonne. Good night, everyone. I love you, sister. Good night, everyone. 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 Good night, Have an awesome day. Let's stay.